book lovers, it is G-Swizz here, and I am here today with the mid-year book freakout tag. I had to get my hair out of my face in the most dramatic way because I'm so extra. This book tag was originally created by Ellie at Earl Grey Books, also Chammy at Read Like Wildfire. Obviously, I had to plug your channel there, Chammy, because obviously I'm a good friend. So pretty much what this book tag is about is you recapping the first half of the year through the prompts that are given to us. I really like recapping stuff, and I usually love recapping stuff at the end of the year, so like to say stuff in the midway point is always pretty hard for me because I'm just like, no, I like to make my mind up about things like my favorite books and my favorite series that I've read at the end of the year, but I find this to be something awesome and something fun to be a part of anyway. Oh, I also forgot to mention I was tagged by Jules at Page by Page. I will link all their videos down in the description so you can check them out because all of these people are awesome. So without further ado, let's get into the mid-year book freakout tag for 2017. So number one will be the best book that you read in 2017 so far. Well, it isn't really decided yet because I never usually finalize things till the end of the year because that's just what I have to do for some reason. I don't know if it's an OCD thing or not, but I'm just gonna have to say Stranger Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I was going to say another book, which is what a lot of people are probably expecting on this list, but um, I'm gonna have to go with Stranger Dreamer for this one because it's a story that has really stuck with me long after reading it. Number two is the best sequel you read in 2017. We all know what it's gonna be. I can't bring your shadows, baby you Schwab. <laughs> you thought it was gonna be Agarwood, didn't you? Actually, in all honesty, I can actually choose. I love them both so much, and I don't know, I think it's just because I love these characters so much and I love revisiting them and trash for anything she writes. I guess that's kind of why it's kind of included on this list, but you know, it's tied with A Gathering of Shadows. I did like A Conjuring of Light, but there's something about A Gathering of Shadows that really got to me. I guess you can include A Conjuring of Light for this question as well, because those two books together are amazing sequels. Number three is a new release that you haven't yet read, but you're wanting to read it by the end of 2017. Guilt is weighing me down because it's 700 pages. It's weighing me down. Yes, if you're wondering, I'm so ashamed of myself for not reading this yet. But the reason why I didn't read it straight away is because the day that I bought it, like the day that it came out, I found out that the last book in the trilogy is coming out in 2019. Cassandra Clare's taking a break with the series. And I can't handle that. I, I really cannot handle that. I can't handle the emotional impact that this is going to have on me and then wait two years for the last book in the trilogy. Like, I need the last book in the trilogy, but I need to read this now before I get spoiled. And I've been spoiled for one thing. It, it's not who dies, okay? If you tell me who dies, I will- I almost said I'll kill you, but no. I won't because that's a death threat and that's the last thing I want to do, especially when people are sending me Sandra Claire death threats. But um, you'd be blocked from my channel. I would do anything in my power to shut you out and not talk to you ever again. But seriously, I need to read this ASAP Rocky. Question number four is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And I'm going to have to go with a book that is not very popular today because the ever release dropped today as I'm filming this. And that's Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Maas. Now, I don't care whether this is following a character and it's not following Selena slash Aelin. I just care about the fact that it is in the Throne of Glass universe. I'm so excited that it's in the Throne of Glass universe. I will literally read anything in that universe. In all honesty, I kind of prefer it to the Akatar universe, which a lot of people don't actually prefer it to. It's just something that I grew attached to first and I can't let go of those emotions with that series. But I love Kale. I absolutely still love Kale. No matter how much the fandom hates him right now, I love him. And so I will definitely be reading Tower of Dawn. No matter how much the covers suck, but seriously, I'm the most bitter about the hardback. A lot of people are very bitter about the paperback, but when you think about it, like, it matches the Assassin's Blade paperback pretty well, except it doesn't have a person on the cover. Whereas with the, um, US hardback, it has two different colors fading like an ombre. You've got two different sceneries in the cover, and it just... I don't like that. I need the color schemes to match. I literally need to start making videos where I say everything that I need to say in the video and make it clear. That's kind of what I'm trying to do right now. So what I was meaning by what I was saying before is that it's not the fact that it doesn't match the rest of the series. Personally, I don't mind if somebody's not on the front of the cover. The problem is, is that the cover is trying to be more than one thing. You've got the scenery and you've got the coloring, which usually happens with the 
Dream Surgery Mask box. And then you have the shield and it just looks so poorly photoshopped together. Like it literally looks like it's a last minute cover slapped together. Not even the scenery color matches the coloring of the actual cover. And that's what really frustrates me. If anything, it just hurts my OCD really bad. It's not the fact that Kale is not on the front cover, although I do wish that Kale was on the front cover. I just wish the graphic designer actually did a good job in making the cover work because it just does not work whatsoever. To be very honest, I prefer the UK cover because it kind of looks like it was designed a whole lot better than this one. They had a year between the last book and this book to actually design the cover and they just didn't do a good job. And I'm so sorry to anybody who actually likes the cover, but all elements do not match with each other and that's what frustrates me. Number five will be your biggest disappointment of the year. I've had many disappointments this year, but the one I can think of the most will probably be The Winner's Trilogy by Marie Rukowski. I'm actually in the middle of the last book and so far I'm actually not disappointed in the last book. It's very funny because I think Chami in 2016 included the last book in her biggest disappointment, but it's because it includes a trope that she doesn't like, but for some reason the trope is the most interesting thing in the series right now. I am not interested in anything else about the series whatsoever. I gave this book and the second book like a two out of five stars, maybe even a two stars eventually. It's not because that this is poorly written. It's not poorly written, it's just I don't like the characters that much. I'm not a big fan of the characters. I don't care about their romance. I don't care about anything. I don't care about the political intrigue because I don't care about the world. And I wish that I cared. I wish that I cared about everything, but it just... <sighs> It's boring to me. That's that's pretty much the simplest way to put it. And a lot of people like it, and I don't. And it's okay. It's not for everyone. It's not for me, but it's definitely for somebody else. Number six is your biggest surprise. And I could go with Stranger Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I could go with The Crown's Game by Evelyn Sky, but I actually read that in December last year. So I can't actually count those. But I'm going to say The Wicked and Divine. I was not expecting to like this as much as I did. A lot of people do not like this because it's very confusing. It was not confusing for me at all. Like, it had me the whole time. I loved it. And I know it's kind of sacrilegious to say that I like it because it has to do with like gods and pretty dark, pretty dark stuff. And I'm not usually into really dark comics like this. There were times that I was cringing. It was pretty violent, pretty gory at times, but I couldn't stop reading. That's what mattered about this. Like I was just so surprised how it held my attention the whole time. Number seven is your favorite new author. This could be debut or new to you. I'm gonna have to go with Jodi McAllister who is the author of Valentine. I actually read this book for for review the first half of this year back in January and I instantly fell in love with it and I loved the references so much. There's a lot of references to stuff like Vampire Academy and it takes place in my hometown like it takes place in Sydney which is amazing and also the cover is stunning. The author is just such a lovely person like I haven't met her in person yet and like a bunch of people have met her in person and I was so so blessed with the review copy. I had to buy a finished copy. If you like urban fantasy and if you're a big fan of Holy Black and Cassandra Clare this one's your book. It's, it's amazing. Question number eight is your newest fictional crime. For this one, I'm gonna have to go with Laszlo Strange. I am obsessed with Laszlo Strange, guys. It was so funny. I had a dream that I got a kitten and I named him Laszlo after Laszlo Strange. I also had a dream that I met Laszlo Strange. It's so funny that I had a couple of funny dreams when it came to this book. I tried to think about this book at nighttime so that it could kind of like go into my dream for some reason and it kind of did because this book is pretty much about dreams and I just love the characters so much. I think it was also because I read this book at a very tough time. Not really tough tough time but like I watched Logan and I couldn't stop thinking about Logan and I tried to make myself feel better and happier because I was just emotionally wrecked from Logan. I thought about this book and these characters to make me feel better and for some reason I, I felt better. But yes, Laszlo Strange, he is my sunshine. My only sunshine. He makes me happy when skies are grey. Question number nine is your newest favorite fictional character. And for this one, I'm gonna have to go with Doreen Green, AKA The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Now, I haven't read this book yet. This is apparently her origin story. I haven't read it and I'm really excited to get to it because Doreen Green, like what else would you want? But I am obsessed with The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl comics. I really love Ryan Norris and Erica Henderson's take on it because amazing writer and an amazing illustrator. I can't imagine The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl in any other way. Like they just do her so much justice and I love that so much. I really love her character. She brings me so much joy and she's so relatable. She's pretty much like me. Number 10 is the book that made you cry. And I was actually going to include this author as my favorite debut author, but I didn't want to repeat, but I really love this book. This one, oh boy, it made me cry so much. And that is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. 
Faith, can you shush? After reading chapter two, you know what I'm talking about if you've read up to chapter two alone. This book is pretty much inspired by Black Lives Matter and it opened my eyes so much. But not only that, it made me feel like I literally had lost a friend and I could relate to Star so much. But at the same time, there are ways that I can't relate to Star because I am not African American and I don't live in a country where gun laws are not as strict and I'm so happy that it has opened my eyes to Star Struggle. Number 11 will be a book that made you happy. And I'm gonna have to go with The Trials of Apollo, The Hidden Oracle by Rick Riordan. I think I included The Trials of Apollo, The Dark Prophecy last time, I'm not too sure. But this book made me pretty happy. I mean, I didn't like it as much as the first book, but it made me super happy and I'm, I was just so over the moon to receive it from Penguin Teen Australia. It was kind of my dream come true to receive a Rick Riordan book for review and I did. I mean, it's not my favorite book in the series, but I, I loved it so much and it did make me happy because Papa Rick. Number 12 will be the most beautiful book that you bought slash received this year. And um, I'm gonna have to go with my Lord of Shadows Waterstones edition. I still haven't read it and I've got two editions of it. This is great, guys. I don't feel like a failure at all. Number 13 will be what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Well, I've got a whole stack. Let's start with Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. I want to read this whole series in anticipation for the last book. I am going to start off with this book in July and then so on and so forth. And then in December, the last book will be coming out. So I will be reading all six books in the lead up and it will be awesome. Hopefully. Next will be The Crown's Fate by Evelyn Skye. This one's self-explanatory. I love The Crown's game and The Crown's Fate I have to read before the end of the year because I gotta finish the series and also because this one's Biblio Squad book pick of the month for July and this one is for June. So <laughs> there's that. I also gotta read this one. Have I started this one yet? No. As in filming this, I haven't started it yet. So these are two ones that I had to. I wasn't even gonna be including this one in the video but hey, it was right in front of me and I have to mention Biblio Squad because plug. Never Night by Jay Kristoff before God's Grave comes out because I want to be on this bandwagon. I already have half the essentials I need to make a Mia Funko Pop and um... I haven't even read the series yet, but I know that I'm gonna like it. This, and also I have Red Sister as well, so probably I'll read Red Sister because everybody who loves Nevernight loves Red Sister or something like that. Also, I wanna finish the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I have read The Final Empire. I need to read The Well of Ascension and Hero of Ages, and I wanna move on to the secondary series for Mistborn, so yeah. Also, another series that I want to include onto that TBR will be the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard series by Rick Riordan. Now, I read the first book last year, and I actually included the first book for the question last year but I have forgotten almost everything about that book except the fact that he's Annabeth's cousin and there was some diversity in it but I have literally forgotten almost everything about that book because it was kind of like a standalone book and I kind of want to read them all back to back because I feel like that's how I remember Rick Riordan's books the best when they're all back to back and I remember the order of what happened and I'm also going to be buying them in the US editions because the Australian paperback was published like in a smaller paperback and the second one they decided to publish in a taller paperback and they're gonna do the third one in that too. I'm sorry, Penguin, but you kind of failed there. Also, probably the main reason why is because they're probably the most beautiful covers that I've ever seen. I feel like they are my favorite Rick Riordan book covers. They are gorgeous, and so I have to have them. And finally, number 14 will be your favorite book community member. And for this one, at the moment, I'm gonna have to say my friend Jenna at the channel just a little bit random. I love her channel so much, and I just love her as a person. The reason why I'm mentioning her for this year is because I met her in the first half of the year, and so I felt like it was fitting to mention her and to say how much I think she's awesome and she is honestly one of my favorites. It was really difficult picking like a favorite because I have like so many favorites and I've also given her a shout out but I'm gonna give her another shout out because she's awesome and I feel like you guys should go check her out. She's one of my favorites. If she had a blurb for her channel I'd probably be in it. Right Jenna? That being said I'm going to tag some people and of course because I always do Jenna you're tagged. So that is gonna be it for this video today book lovers. You can follow me on my social medias. I'm at Jesus Books on Twitter and Instagram and I'm also Goodreads. That's www.goodreads.com slash Jesus. What am I doing with my buddy? As I always will, I love you book lovers and I will see you later. Peace.